This is a special episode from the pre-coronavirus warning episode series vault. Oh, in 2018, it seemed like death was acting up, as the older folk would say. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I, I gotta admit, I gotta confess something. I have nothing written. Nothing. Everything that we're going to discuss in this brief little talk, this tete-a-tete, this colloquy, this meeting, is coming from a, a cover and an end that contains 66 books in between. So the information was already written. I'm standing here being used by the Holy Ghost to share with my brethren what our Father and our brother, Jesus Christ, has already said through the spirit realm. <laughs> so give God the glory. Give God the glory. It is a blessing that we can read the Lord our God ministering his word the words in red to encourage us, to minister to us, to talk to us, to feed us. And he spoke here from verses 28 through 47 saying that there will be a resurrection for all. Everyone that leaves this world, everyone that has vanished, everyone that might have crashed into the sea, or everyone that has been cut up or beheaded or dismembered, everyone that just vanished and you didn't see him anymore, there is going to be a resurrection for all. A resurrection for all. And Jesus said in verse 28, to marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. The hour is coming. There's going to be a time this world is going to end and what God is concerned about is that we take this life for granted and we don't even use it some of us for the glory of God and all of us scripture says sin sin a man is so shallow that as Jesus has said in verse 43 I am come in my father's name and ye receive me not so now let's deal with this issue because there's a problem. The body of Christ, the collective body of Christ, every last one of us, when we all come into the one faith, those of us that are in the one faith are going to be resurrected, caught up, and go away with our Lord to the marriage feast that happens in heaven. Those that uh, are not caught up in that first resurrection are going to go through all kind of trials and the tribulation here in the earth realm. We're not going to be here. There's a lot of people that when they start reading scripture, some want to start at Revelation. I, I, I strongly suggest that you don't do that because the apocalypse or that which is hidden and not revealed, except when you read it, is it, it, it's, it's, it's too deep for you to get into and you can't appreciate what's going to come thank you Lord if you have not learned to appreciate what has come <laughs> he who has come Jesus said in verse 43 I am come in my father's name and he received me not 
right before that verse 42 he said but i know you that ye have not the love of god in you he said in verse 41 i receive not honor from men why he said it in verse 42 that ye have not the love of god in you what's the proof verse 43 i am come in my father's name and ye receive me not if another shall come in his own name him ye will receive oh wow see now this is deep this is still going on leaders getting more recognition than jesus there's times God has sent me to ministries to help them over the years. The last 20, June 1st of this year will be 25 years God has had me in this office of apostle. And he has used me to go to ministries and share the word of God with them. And there's been times that the Lord would use me to say something and I would see the brethren look at their leader as though they are the authority on what is wrong and what is right. When all they have to do is like the Bereans did in scripture. And that is when the word is going forth, sit there. When you hear a scripture mentioned, look it up. Follow. Follow what the speaker is saying. <sighs> Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 7. This is what the Lord just led me to open up for because thou hast trusted in thy works and in thy treasures thou shalt also be taken and Chemosh shall go forth into captivity with his priests and his princes together and the spoiler shall come upon every city and no city shall escape the valley also shall perish and the plain shall be destroyed as the Lord hath spoken give wings unto Moab that it may flee and get away for the cities thereof shall be desolate without any to dwell therein cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. That's powerful. Doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. Yes, there, there's a lot of that going on. And because of that, God is concerned. And he's raised up ministers. In the fivefold ministry, thank you, Lord, to talk to his people and to inform them of how to accomplish what the Holy Ghost hath promised thee. If you have a bookmark, put it right there in John 5, and let's jog over. To Ephesians chapter 4 and let's notice something in verse 7 of Ephesians 4 the scripture says but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ now it is important for you to understand that in the Old Testament you saw the father's ministry you saw how he dealt with, he chose a nation, he dealt with a nation. You, you, you go back to Genesis and see how he created everything. You, you read about the creation week. We find that instead of things starting out as day and night, it started out as night and day. Go back and look in the book of Genesis chapter 1. And the, and the, the evening and the morning were the first day. So this is what the Jews go by. We're the ones that have it wrong, but this is what the Jews go by. 
their whole timetable, their whole clock, their whole, uh, their, their months, their seasons, everything is different than what we go by. Oh, that's powerful. We see the ministry of the Father in the Old Testament. We see that he talked to prophets and prophetesses. We see that he allowed his people to have a king because they wanted to copy everybody else. They said, we want to be governed by a king like the other nations. And God didn't like this because it was intended for them, us, even all of us, mankind, period, to be under theocracy and not bureaucracy. But man, always want to do what man want to do. That's sad. It's unfortunate. But this is what happens. And uh, before the father ended his ministry, <laughs> he informed the prophets to tell the people that there was another one coming. That he was, in Ezekiel 34, he said he was coming down to seek out his sheep and deliver them and save them and help them, free them. Because he said in Ezekiel 34, I have ought against the shepherds. Why? Because they weren't feeding the flock. Mm-mm. All they thought about was themselves. It is against the will of God for the pastor to be the only one or the prophetess or the prophet or the evangelist, male or female, or the apostle or the teacher. It is against the will of God for the leader to be the only one that appears to be prospering as man knows prosperity in the ministry while everyone else is struggling. That is not the will of God. It's not the will of God. It is God's will that his people, his people, as a matter of fact, all of mankind seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness what pleases God. And he said, when you do this, then all the temporal blessings that you need will be added unto you. Yes, that's New Testament. That's true. But he didn't start saying that just there. He already said it before. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, Here's what he said. He told Moses to say this, and Moses did say it. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. What is the condition? If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So now we have a challenge here. What is the challenge? Read. Study the word of God. Now I know there's a lot of people that say, well, I could read the Bible by myself and understand. Now, now that's, that's not entirely true. Now you need a seasoned teacher to explain this hard book to you. And the most experienced teacher is the Holy Ghost. He is the teacher. He shall lead you into all truth, but everyone can't hear his voice. So what he's done, <laughs> he's put together a ministry a service unto himself consisting of five 
offices. Now, any and everyone that he places in the service or the ministry unto himself stands somewhere in the five-fold ministry. Someone had asked me years ago, apostles, everyone in ministry in the five-fold? Yes, if you're in ministry. Well, I, I disagree, some people may say. Okay. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now, elementary show, elementary uh, theology tells us that grace is, is, is something we don't deserve. That's, that's grace. That's grace. That's favor from God. Grace. Wherefore, verse 8, he saith, <laughs> this is what Christ said, when he ascended up on high, he led, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Captivity were those that were already captive by death. When he ascended up on high, it's important that you study up on the earthly descent of Jesus Christ. The, not the, the, the surface earth, but underneath his, 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 his trip to the underworld, to hell. He went there and he made a spoil of principalities openly. Demons were in hell celebrating the fact that we killed him, saith they. And Satan is receiving worship, honor from these demons. Gloating, salivating, happy, thinking that he accomplished something. Yet in a place, hell, that is full of darkness full of screaming and suffering and weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth there appeared a light this light was unusual it caused this hellish celebration to stop and demons notice this light in hell getting brighter and brighter and brighter until suddenly they realize it was Christ the anointed one the one that in the earth realm was led by the Holy Ghost into the wilderness to tell Satan it's on for those three and three quarter years that he did his earthly ministry he uprooted everything that Satan did. Those that Satan made blind, Christ gave him sight. Those that Satan made deaf, Christ gave him, gave him hearing. Those that Satan crippled, Christ said, get up and walk. Those that Satan had, had plagued with leprosy, Christ healed him. And challenged him and said, don't go tell nobody. But they went and did it anyway. He knew they were going to do it. Sometimes God will challenge you to tell people about what he's done in your life. But you have to hear him. Because even when he says, don't tell nobody, if you hear the next line, you hear him say, or will you? <laughs> so these demons saw him and he walked up to Satan's throne the older folk and traditional folk and a lot of denominational folk said that he took the keys of death hell in the grave and the people that don't read said I agree but that's wrong in the book of Revelation chapter one here's what Jesus said and the words have been read if you have the red letter edition 
This is what Jesus said. Thank you, Lord. Revelation chapter 1. I got to find it. Chapter 1, verse, uh, uh, I'm going to start at verse, let me start at verse 9, because the Apostle John wrote this as the Holy Ghost led him to inform us. He said, I, John, who also am your brother, verse 9, chapter 1, Revelation, and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. This was a Sunday. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha. And the Omega, the first and the last. These are Greek, the Greek alphabet. It's not A and Z, it's Alpha and Omega. He said, The first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea he's still today trying to speak to the places of worship who claim that they follow him who claim that they follow his word he's still trying to talk but they aren't listening. They're having pastor's anniversaries. They're having bake sales. They're adding ATM machines in the ministry now using swipers that you plug in your phone just to take your money. They're adding offices other than the five-fold ministry. They're throwing any gender everywhere. And they're even saying include everyone so now the doctrine of inclusion has crept up in the chat which means you can be a sinner and come in as you are and stay that way and that is wrong seven is the number of completion these churches the seven churches he completely spoke to them. The ones that were right, he commended them. The ones that was wrong, he checked them. In verse 12 of chapter 1 of Revelation, John wrote, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. The candlesticks represent the seven churches. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about with pap, excuse me, girt about the paps with a golden girdle, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire the epitome of wisdom and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in the furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters now as many people talk about this being the description of Christ yes that's true but this outer description 
is not what we should focus on. That has its place, mind you. But this is not what we should focus on. What we should focus on was his message, verse 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. An angel here in the Greek also means messenger. Also means the pastors. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And this is what John said in verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Watch this. And have the keys of hell and of death. He did not say death, hell, and the grave. But when you don't read, you don't know. And there's nothing worse than saying amen to a lie or a half true, which is still considered a lie. It is nothing worse than aligning yourself with a ministry or minister who is not going by the written computation, which is what the word logos means in the Greek, of God. But instead, people who watch other people minister and they take their style, the world causes swag and unfortunately so do some ministers, but they take someone else's style, they try to talk like somebody else, and walk like somebody else, and minister like somebody else, and if they hear somebody say, Jesus took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, then they go and tell some other people that Jesus took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and still be wrong. And the unlearned brethren say, Amen. So he, he, Jesus walks up to Satan in the lower parts of the earth and he snatches the keys of death and of hell. Why not the grave? Because we all have to go there to go either to heaven or to hell. The door for us is the grave. Our flesh will sure enough be placed in that ground six feet and from dust we came, dust we shall return back. But our spirit, which in the Hebrew and in the Greek is breath, in the Hebrew is ruach, in the Greek it's pneuma, our spirit, which is our breath, goes back. To God because all breath whether you're saved or unsaved the breath of God is what's keeping you up but the breath goes back to God but the soul that sinneth it shall die death theologically means separation there's two kinds of death there is physical death, which we all experience when we leave this world. And then there is spiritual death, which some are experiencing right now while they're in this world. Spiritual death is when you, your soul, is separated from God. You grab your food and you eat. You don't say no grace. How you live here on earth determines where you go when you die. Now, it's a lot of people that leave this world after killing people, robbing, raping, stabbing, uh, shooting, 
all of that, been in jail all their life and so forth, and have the audacity to lay up in some ministry that let them lay there as if that's the way they live their life. No, that's not the case. The only reason they're laying there is because that minister is making a couple of dollars, maybe. Maybe he won't charge the member, but he's trying to do the member a favor. But while everyone is at the funeral looking at this body, assuming God needed another rose for his garden or another angel or their number was up or they're cutting a the step. Like Al Sharpton said, James Brown was in heaven cutting a step. That was a lie. None of this is going on. If you li lived in the earth realm, apart from God, then you were already spiritually dead. So when you leave this world, you will not be with God. Not at all. Those that leave this world after serving God, as it says again in Hebrews chapter 4, Verse 3, for we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have swore, sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. It was already established who God was going to bring home with him. And believe it or not, we're just living out what God knew we were already going to do. That's just it. Verse 11 says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any more man fall, excuse me, after the same example of unbelief. So, here we are trying to live right when the lord went down to the lowest part of the earth which is hell in the center of the earth after he snatched the keys of death and of hell from satan remember he didn't snatch the keys of the grave because we all got to go there but death no longer has jurisdiction over those that leave this world as a believer even the lord used paul to write for to be absent in the body is to be present with christ so we we leave this world our soul enters into god's rest where we rest until he comes back to get his body, his bride, the church. The keys of death. He took. Death has no jurisdiction over us. The keys of hell he took because what he was getting ready to do is lead those that were captive in hell because of death, we're now going to be taken captive by him and led up to heaven to rest before God. So there was a saved compartment of hell. You know, there's a difference between compartment and department. D means out, comp. Apartment means to compile, to be put together. So there was, uh, you had the same part of hell, which was called Abraham's bosom, and you had the unsaved part of hell, which was called hell, show, the unseen world, the world of the dead, and between those two compartments there was a chasm fixed uh, so that that way those over here couldn't go over there and those over there could not go over here so Christ took those two keys he snatched them and went to the same part Abraham's bosom the same part of hell and he said 
I'm here. He ministered to those that were that died, that left this world believing, that left this world in the faith. He said, I'm here. He showed himself unto them. And then the angels ushered. Those of you that are working in a place of worship and your ushers, this is where it come from. They ushered those souls from Abraham's bosom to heaven. And Jesus said, I'll be back. I got to make a stop. I'll meet you there, but I got to make a stop. Satan was disarmed. The demons were ashamed. All of hell was embarrassed. And then what Jesus did, he came back into the earth realm and went into that tomb. And when he went in there, he folded up. Now the Holy Ghost, who is the spirit of Christ, he raised that body up that was laying there. See, while the body was laying there, the spirit of Christ, who is the Holy Ghost, <laughs> was in the lower parts of the earth handling things. So now we're talking about the three in one God that we serve. No, the word Trinity is not in scripture, but the implication, the examples are. Yes, God the Father manifested himself in flesh. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. The word God there is the, from the Greek word theos. In the beginning was the word, that capital W, that word is logos which means the written word of God, the expression of God, the computation, one plus one. The computation is two. The bottom line is two. In the beginning was the computation of God, of Theos. And the computation was with Theos, and the computation was Theos. God is the only way. And the way to him is through the computation, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, see, those in the theology class, this is what you learn. This is scripture. It's not surface teaching. Surface teaching don't get us nowhere. But it is the deep things of the word of God that gets us where we're trying to go. This was a special clip from the pre-coronavirus warning episode series vault.